Ah, as you can see, almost in full color, it's taking a trip to the wonderful Agrabah. And I figured since we were in Agrabah, I figured I'd go ahead and take a look back on the Super Nintendo game, Aladdin. Uh, honestly, I didn't even know about the live action movie for Aladdin that's coming out next summer. So it made it really weird when I was playing the game and I seen the commercial come on TV. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get to the game. Ah, good old Apu. Now, you might be wondering, what in the world made me come back playing this game? Well, I really don't know. Other than, I just got these songs stuck in my head. Super random. Almost like when you go back and look at a movie, because you've just been thinking about it, and you don't even know why it's in your head. That's pretty much what happened to me with Aladdin. These stupid songs jump back on my head from my childhood, and next thing I know, I was like, the only way I'm going to get this out of my head is play this damn game. So, the only one I had was for the Super Nintendo. Which, as you can kind of see, that's why I don't have a sword. And that's why the health is hearts instead of the little genie smoke. Now, one thing I would like to point out is that I definitely was learning on the fly as I was playing this game. Uh, case in point, you can see the little carpet looking rag thing by the apple icon yeah that thing allows you to actually float down when you're jumping like if you hold the right trigger Aladdin will pull out a little cape and he'll float down I had no idea that that's what that rug thing did so plenty of times during the game I would try to jump and do the float and I didn't understand why it wouldn't happen like I thought the game was just glitching or the controls were just bad. So I had to go back and pretty much, I guess, say the controls aren't bad at all. I just didn't know what the hell I was doing. So yeah, you might be thinking, well, why didn't you look at the controls or why didn't you look in the manual? I'm pretty sure that that's listed somewhere. Yeah, it probably is, but uh, I'm not that guy. I don't do instruction manuals and I don't do controls. I like to just play how I play and learn as I go. And you can see that it has great faults, as I just spoke about. Now, another thing, I definitely forgot that you could dash in this game. And the weird part is that I seen you could dash. And when I started the game, somehow that completely left me. So I'm jumping over these little, like, ravines and stuff, thinking, man, these are some exact jumps. Like, you really have to be on a very, very edge just to make it, because Aladdin can barely jump. No. If I would have hit the dash, like I found out later in the game, that all of these jumps would have been a lot easier. And definitely would have took down whatever little difficulty this game actually has. Now, most games based on movies, they usually either stick straight to the script or they deviate from it because it usually leads to a better game. Uh, kind of like the new Spider-Man game that just came out. You know, they came up with their own storyline it deviated from the movie and I feel like it did it well now for Aladdin Aladdin definitely sticks straight to the movie script like it's pretty much like you watch the movie all over again and honestly for Aladdin that works perfect like I played this game because of all the old songs and because of how much I like the movie so it really works out perfect for this game in this one instance also, it works great that I don't have to worry about any spoilers because I don't know anyone alive that hasn't seen this movie. Well, maybe kids, but they're probably not watching this anyway, so they don't count. Now, I know it said it sticks right to the movie script, and I would say about 98% of the time it actually does. There's one or two instances in this game that I feel like was just put in the game just to probably add a little something different so it's not verbatim from the movie. Um, one of them is a poo actually kind of flies off the magic carpet as you're flying on it in one of the, I guess, little story cutscenes. Um, I don't remember that happening in the movie. That could have happened in the movie. I haven't seen it in a long time. But I'm pretty sure that it didn't and it was just something added maybe to fluff out the game a little bit or like I said, add a little bit of variation so it wasn't 
one for one match to the movie now for the gameplay i know i already spoke about the rug and the dash mechanics that i clearly forgot or didn't know how they worked for pretty much half the game but the gameplay definitely is really good the controls are definitely tight so if you like tightness giggity then that's something that's going to play well for you i didn't have any issue with anything other than like i said the jumps that it always looks like i barely make because i wasn't using a dash but besides that besides brain farts on my end that i can't hold against the game the game plays really well now just to speak a little more about the game if you notice of course you have apples and you don't have a sword in the super nintendo version nintendo felt like the sword i guess was a little too mature for an aladdin game so they took it out i don't know i'm guessing that was the case so you still have the apples and you can throw apples at enemies kind of daze them but if you want to kill an enemy or knock it out, well, most bigger enemies, as you can see, that bat died from an apple. But for the people and the soldiers and stuff like that, the apple usually will just daze them. Then you have to go a la Mario, jump on their head, and that pretty much knocks them out. Now, you also will collect a lot of rubies in this game. The green rubies are one, and the red rubies count for three. Every time you get to 100 rubies, it earns you another heart on Aladdin's heart meter. So you definitely want to get all of the rubies that you can so that you can level up. I guess in a way, leveling up. It, Aladdin as much as you can. Also, another secret about the rubies or emeralds, whatever you want to call them. The red ones actually do change the in-game cutscene. After you beat Jafar, if you get over, I think it's 50 or 51 red emeralds, you get a different ending cutscene than you would get if you get anything less than that. Honestly, the bonus cutscene really isn't worth the effort. It's pretty much the same exact cutscene with a different background. But if you want to get the best of the best, I guess, then that's how you do it. Now, for regaining health, you have two options. You can either get the big chicken or you can get the breadstick. The breadstick replenishes partial health, up to three hearts, I believe. Now, the big chicken, no matter how many hearts you have, will give you full health. So, anytime you see a big chicken and you're down on health, you definitely want to get that. Now, these little golden scarabs, as you see flying around, they're not too hard to get, but you kind of want to grab them as soon as they get out of that treasure chest. That will lead to a special genie bonus game after you complete the level. So, this right here is the little genie bonus game. Pretty much, you just spin, you hit the button to stop it. The game puts it wherever it wants to put it. You'll see that the, the spinning actually ends up going backwards. I don't know how that works. I feel like the game just gives you whatever it wants. Obviously, you see you can get a 1-up. You can get a 2-up. The genie thing actually gives you a continue and an extra heart. The heart itself just gives you a heart. And the star gives you an extra continue. So anytime you do get those golden scarabs, you want to make sure that you actually capture them so that you can take advantage of that little bonus game. Now, remember when I spoke about the difficulty not being bad at all? Pretty much non-existent? Well, that doesn't count this stage. This stage is definitely difficult. It takes a little while to get used to because as you can see, you can't touch nothing. Hearts mean nothing. One hit, you're dead. At first, I didn't know that all the little rocks, I guess the background part of it, you can't touch it. And you can't get hit by the rocks. You can't get hit by the lava. It's short, but it's definitely frustrating. It took me a little while to get through this. As you can see, I died quite a few times. But as you get the hang of it, you can get through it. And just to prove that I did get through it, here you go. You can watch the tail end of this map or level, I guess whatever you want to call it. Don't be picky. Now, this game doesn't have any save features, doesn't have any save files, but it does use the old password system. So, you pretty much put in these pictures and it lets you progress from the this part, it'll be stage four. So whatever your next stage is, you put in those pictures and you get to progress in your game. Now, the only reason I said I played this game was because of the music, so you definitely gotta speak about the music. The music in this game is, it's an eh. Like the Super Nintendo did better on other games. Maybe they just didn't put a lot of time into it because it was just some movie game. But the music is good enough 
to where you do know what song it is playing and you can still sing along like me if you want to. So to talk about the music, there's no better stage than the Genie stage because there's probably no better song in the whole movie than the Genie song. So I'll let it go for a little bit and you can say for yourself how, how much you like the music in this game. And that's what I mean. You know what the music is, but they definitely could have done better. Now, I know I said that I didn't care about spoilers, but you know what? Just for you guys, I added a little spoiler alert for this. As you can see, this is the last boss of the game. And the only reason I'm showing this, well besides the fact to prove that I beat the game, is this horrible slowdown. This is a really good game, except for this one part. And now it only happens when Jafar shoots out these rocks. Every time he spits out the rocks, the game slows down to a crawl. Like I have no idea why. There's so many more things on the screen at once throughout various points in the game and it never happens. But this one boss fight, oh my God. It just kills the Super Nintendo. I have no idea why, it just does, and it gets on your damn nerves. But with everything taken into account, the game definitely was worth another play. I'm happy I went back and played it. Actually, I'll probably play it again soon, most likely on the Sega Genesis, just to see a lot of the differences. And I'll also get to use a sword. I mean, come on, who, who doesn't want to use a sword? But, like I said, it's a really good game. Uh, if you're a fan of Aladdin at all, I don't know how you wouldn't be. If you're not, you're probably a serial killer or something. Definitely go back and give this game a play. It shouldn't be that expensive. And if you really want to go the cheap route, freaking get an emulator. Download the ROM. Do something. Just play the game. Now I know what some of you are thinking. Really? Are you about to sit here and promote ROM use and dirty emulators? Yeah. Because these games are expensive. And if I had these games when I was a kid, God damn it, I want these games again. And I'm not paying $200. It's not happening. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, support the developers. Support the games. Well, they ain't selling these games no more. So, when I buy this game from somebody else, I'm not supporting the developer. I'm supporting whoever I bought it from. And he's trying to rape me. And I'm not trying to get raped. So, I'm definitely... For some of these more expensive games, like maybe a Final Fantasy 7 or something like that, I'm getting the ROM. If you don't like it, you don't like it. But I'm not paying six, seven hundred dollars for a game that was fifty dollars when it came out. It's not happening. So if you still don't like my viewpoint, we're just gonna have to agree to disagree. But as I promised, I'll definitely show the ending of the game just to prove that I beat it. And also, because I'm a nice guy, you deserve the end of Aladdin.
No. No. That's actually how the game ends. I'm not going to lie. It scared me. Because I was like, really? Did the game just jip me like that? But anyway. Yep. That's Aladdin. And it's just as great as I remember. Besides that little slowdown at the end. But you get used to it. And here, Jafar makes the worst wish he's probably ever wished. He wished himself into a teeny itty bitty little living space. If you're not a serial killer, then you know what that's off the movie. Obviously, I'm just joking. You're not a serial killer if you didn't see the movie. Or you could be. I don't know. But anyway, thanks for watching this video. I had a lot of fun putting it together. Especially messing with the edit and stuff. That was probably the funnest. But, as always, thanks for supporting the channel. I'll let this play out so that you can see the end and see the Jafar. Wow, that was hard to say. Jafar gets stuck in his little, little black lamp. Alright, peace. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the video as always. And please leave comments below to let us know what we can work on or what you might like to see next come out for the channel. Please check down in the description as well. You can see myself and the other content creators Twitch accounts. Please also look to the left. There's a couple social media accounts that'll keep you up to date with new content coming out on the channel. But as always, please subscribe here and make sure you hit the bell so that you'll be notified when new videos come out.